Hi guys, um, I'm just here to do um, a happy and very joyful deck tech about um, Enchantress is back in Dual Commander in uh, in the new format right now that we're playing um, because uh, it recently got uh, uplifted by a new commander that is uh, Tuvasa the Sunlit that just changed everything and uh, I promised some people that I would talk about this because I've actually been playing this pack for something like 10 years. I think I started playing the pack um, uh, like uh, after Genera uh, was out, which means uh, with the Alara block, that was in 2008. So I think I've been playing something like this for ages. Um, also, I love the pack because I love playing um, non-dual commander uh, strategies in dual commander that are staples or... Um, you know, archetypes that come from the regular formats, that I'm from Legacy Standard and stuff. So, um, I've been playing Enchantress for a while because when I started playing Magic Gathering, it was something like historically, it was something like um, 16 years ago. 16 years ago, I think. I just. Uh, I was playing with friends and my friends used to have you know vintage pack because they didn't care about the format. And they were playing something like. Um, uh, an Enchantress pack which was killing in like three or four turns in Legacy that was absolutely crazy, I just loved the decks and uh, I actually remember this because it was one of the, um, of the first time I, re I remember understanding the affinities in Magic the Gathering I was playing like for two or three months so I just started to understand the basics and uh, I've always wanted to try to build this because uh, I'm not the only one, some people did and that was actually a success from time to time so um, I wanted to, you know, um, share the archetype and my thoughts with you because uh, I'm actually really happy to see um, lots of people try to build the pack uh, by themselves and be very joyful about these new commanders uh, within this history or to the the sunlit. Um, and I wanted to share some thoughts with it, so I've got things to say, lots of things to say to you. This is going to be very long and boring, so I suggest that you take uh, a break, that you close the, the curtains and you take some food and eating because. Uh, it's going to be a hell of a long um, deck tech review, there are so many things to say, I think I'm going to speak fast and um, probably going to be very long, you know, but I gotta go to sleep after this because it's right now very hot in France where I'm sitting right now, it's uh, kind of unbearable, so uh, I hope it's going to be uh, right until the end. Um, so, um, the first pack I was I built around for the history call recall was uh, Rafik uh, of the Many because by then Commander was not that uh, close to overwritten the formats right now. It wasn't the same curve as a legacy pack right now, you know, it was just uh, happy happy triggering, happy playing, building cards, you know, building stuff. It was for multiplayer, it was just like very, very fun for everyone. And you could just play pretty much everything and getting a combo, getting a curve, getting a knowing pack uh, wouldn't be a, 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 boring, a boring thing because everyone was playing really slow. So that time, or right now, it was like... Uh, I'm pretty sure it was like 15 years ago and it already started to be different like 6 to 7 years ago and right now the format has changed to a different pace. Right now we're playing at 20 life points as you know. We have the commander damage will remove, we have new, very new stuff in, in this format uh, that I'm very happy to be a part of you know and it's um, <clears throat> through the, the rules committee it's complicated to uh, handle everything but actually we've made some um, pretty recent changes that are actually cool. And right now you can start playing this back again because it was uh, very hard to play in the last months. And um, except if you test it with first bond. So uh, what is this pack? Um, what is this pack? I just got my uh, reminder next to me. So yeah, I'm not doing this by heart uh, because I would talk for six or seven hours in a row. Uh, it's about, you know, getting extra draws from cards that make you... Uh, draw more than once per turn. Uh, it's about um, casting stickers on the table. Why? Because uh, Magic the Gathering doesn't have that many cards to remove enchantments. So that's not the pack that is strong. It's not the rest. It's just the rest of the format is hard. You know, uh, removing lands is quite hard. Removing, uh, but come on, at least you got many in the new editions. Removing Planeswalkers straight away is quite hard too. And removing um, enchantment is actually quite hard too because. 
The only colors that do this are by order, I would say white, then green, then blue, then nothing. So um, actually you're not sensitive to part of the format that doesn't have any way to handle you, you know, like uh, red does have, uh, I think, it's, you can count red cards on, on your two hands, like Kill Swap, for example, is going to be handling an enchantment for some time, but it's not going to be very efficient at it, so... Um, some of the colors are actually really weak against this, and most of the colors don't pack anything, and you cannot pack anything against enchantment. So you're going to add stickers to the table, add continuous effects and continuous drawing, stacking, sorting, uh, scraying, uh, filtering, extra draws. Um, whatever you're going to do is going to stack t from time to time, and your purpose is to not die for the next first five turns and then you got to uh, you know you've got to uh, essentially draw on the curve uh, that is going to grow 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 and more you got to have a feedback effect on each of the previous turn boosting your future turns unless everything is killed and until you reach a critical point when you can just uh, stop your opponent for a while because you're going to play alone on one of your turns have all your pack uh, turn back face up to the battlefield and win by many many things um, I would say you can win with an empty library uh, because you're not sensitive to drawing anymore and you don't um, care about this and also you can win just at the maximum I'm gonna have to make you dream uh, your opponent will have zero permanent uh, nothing in in hand, the inability to uh, resist to drawing and losing to cards, uh, uh, not being able to draw, so emptying the pack, uh, not being able to play lands, not being able to play uh, instance, having to pay much more for everything, having no creator in play, uh, having everything exiled, and you're probably going to have your opponents unable to do anything and unable to play a single magic game and a single magic card after this. Like the only thing they could do probably is uh, exile like. Um, like uh, the cards that just make mana out of their hands and things that are free, you know, just like force of wind or stuff like that. So it's going to be really efficient at this. Uh, like Elvish Spirit Guide or whatever it's going to be is going to be the rare things that they can do, which does nothing. So that's the the purpose of the pack. Uh, it's actually not commander centric. It's not revolving around your commander. It has never been revolving around your commander. It was really good with no commander. Like, basically, you could just play anything you don't care. Uh, the thing was, uh, I was playing Genera um, Zero of War first, because when you get up to the point you generate uh, infinite amount of mana, or just like hundreds of amounts of mana, it's going to be white mana most of the time. And actually, Playing with Genera was quite hard because she's a really good uh, beat down uh, commander where you always have two mana untapped to just boost it end of turn, boost it all the time and actually I've won countless numbers of games where people were focused on enchantments and actually Genera was going to kill them uh, with or without the old school commander damage rule which is not removed. So that is uh, not much of a sense to find a commander but right now uh, Wizards has decided to print a pack well, actually, the whole pack is revolving around enchantments. You, you got the packs here. Um, um, the, the, the most amazing one to me was probably this one, uh, and the um, Aminet 2 was also really interesting to see. Uh, kind of new cards to play, uh, nothing really exceptional, but I have to admit that this is a true revolution in the world of enchantress, you know? Because right now you got a commander that's got no dysfunction, you know, no drawback, it's going to be a perfect commander. It's, um, you know, if you remember, it's 1-1, one, one. it's in Japanese, so maybe you don't remember. It's 1-1 one, one that gets plus 1, plus 1 for each enchantment you control, including uh, itself, because it's not an enchantment, but it can become, you're going to see it later on. Um, and also, when you play, when you cast the, the first enchantment on each of your turns, so first and your turns only, uh, you draw a card. You have to, it's a have to effect, I think. So um, this is actually not an enchantress at all, but it's gonna make you have an extra draw for most of your turns if you got one mana enchantment, which is cool. It's more than enough, it's a big body, it doesn't fly, so it doesn't go through moat, but it's actually kinda good. It's growing in numbers as your deck growing in numbers, so it follows the logic of the pack, 
Um, and also it's, um, it's something that makes you draw which is also following the other logic of the pack. So this is totally 100% going with the pack, with the invention, any ancient pack. So uh, whatever you build it, however you build it, is going to be perfect. So the thing is, you could play a street as well. Uh, I think a street is not really good at all. Uh, it's an enchantment, it's a planeswalker. Uh, the abilities are not strong, the plus two is not good. It's Probably good if you really build the pack around it, and most of the time you're gonna like having red more than blue to untap um, other things because you want to play different stuff. So actually, Street is a very interesting uh, planeswalker. Uh, it's actually the first time I include a planeswalker after tethering Garrick in the pack, uh, which I tried and I've just flown up um, out of the pack because it's not efficient anymore. And it's actually good, so I'm not going to talk about the other ones. Um, Tuvasa the Sunlit is really high above everything else. So it's by far the best commander you could play here, it's just buries up Genera and everything else. Uh, I'm going to talk about this at the end of the video. I think the Revy Imperial Tactician, which is banned, is still better than Tuvasa actually, because it's, it helps you play another game plan that is the full untapped plan where you just uh, have a few um, cards right now in this archetype, in this version that you could play more of them uh, and win really fast with a very certitude of winning. So uh, Derevi would be amazing with Ceres Sanctum and Nectos. So we, we're going to talk about this uh, later on, you know. Um, so this is a revolution. Wow, we got a new commander that is actually uh, corresponding to the path that already existed. I've been playing this for years without the commander and I actually didn't care. So, uh, which commander? Um, if you want to play the archetype, you have to play green and white. That's uh, historically the colors of enchantments. Green and white. You cannot have green, you cannot not have green, you cannot not have white. You have to have green and white all the time. Uh, you, you're not going to choose because the draw engines are in green and the best enchantments in the world are in white. Uh, some very spiky, precise enchantments are in other colors, like uh, black and red don't bring you anything good. Um, they bring you like um, amazing enchantments that are not going to fit in the pack, like Chains of Mephistopheles. Uh, Sneak Attack is amazing, Maelstrom Nexus, uh, Phyrexian Arena. Uh, all the animate deads and copies especially, Recurring Nightmare is going to be cool. Uh, Perforos, the god, is going to be um, amazing. Yombox, Nogmos Bargain is going to be good but strictly useless in the pack. Necropotent is not corresponding to the pack, you cannot play these two. Uh, Chain to the Rocks is amazing. Uh, if you have to play Red and Mountains, but Chain to the Rocks is amazing. Uh, it's basically a source to push for white, but it's an enchantment in addition to this. And no one's going to kill your land to um, your basic mountain to just remove the enchantment, you know. Uh, Bitter Blossom, uh, Assemble the Legion, uh, War Stall is actually very good. Uh, not only multiplayer in duels, actually good. Uh, Favored Visions too is already uh, something. You know, the Abyss. The Abyss is amazing if you play Black. So many good stuff you could play. Uh, I'm not even mentioning things like a Never Void or things like that that are impossible to get and impossible to play. So. Um, because they also kill your fucking pack, you know, Never Void is just playing against you and your whole pack becomes unplayable and then you die. Uh, so, yeah, um, as I was saying, uh, it's, it has to be green and white, and obviously if you think a little after considering uh, how you could build the pack, you're gonna come to the conclusion after like uh, half a day of searching through the net, if you don't know or if you're new to magic, that what you have to play is actually blue. Uh, because it has so many interactions with the rest of the pack and with the rest of things. Blue's actually splash is just like 30% of a card in the pack, but it's truly, uh, truly, truly um, amazing, you know. So, um, what about the deck right now? Is it competitive? Uh, I wouldn't say it's competitive. It's just not fun at all. It's halfway between fun and competitive. It is something like a tier 3. I might be like, you know, uh, growing my ankles and feeling like strong, like I've been playing for years, I can play this blindfolded, you know, I just smell the cards and I know what I'm going to do, and I might be playing this up to tier 2. The last time I played it, I made uh, 5-0, then I lost in, uh, I made the top 8 where I won by mistake of my opponent, I should have lost. Uh, won and lost in the finals, losing uh, to Andrea because I was very tired. I had to explain my plays all day because people don't understand Asian and people don't understand the magic enchantment. So I was very tired and I had to explain things. And my opener was good, it's a friend of mine that I like, he's really good. And uh, 
I just lost myself because I didn't make the good targets. I was like, yeah, I won't because I'm going to sacrifice this, do this, play cleansing meditation and do this stuff. And then I was like, oh, I didn't pick up the correct enchantments. And I just killed myself losing to, um, losing to embargo. Like I was like seven, five, three, one, minus one, you're dead. And I just watched myself die because I had like eight lands in the top deck and I just died losing a Tundra for that. Uh, for history, I won the plateau and I just gave the plateau back to the organizer because uh, I was a cool guy and I already had too many plateaus. So, yeah, um, it could be competitive, but there is a condition that uh, it should be competitive with. It's uh, you should have a uh, fast bond. Fast bond is the, uh, the condition uh, upon which uh, this is going to be competitive. You know, uh, the, it changes the pack. The pack with Fastborn is killing like all the time, winning all the time, and winning like I would say 50 to 60 percent faster, which is actually going to help you play and win uh, like really, really fast. Um, when you bring on Fastborn in the format, which we tried a few months ago, but people can complain and the car was overpowering for for some reason, so which has to remove, but it was a field testing, and it was an interesting field testing. Um, I was more than happy to bring Fastborn back to the to the tables. Um, and actually, if you play Fastborn, you could play uh, Rune Halo, which is going to protect you from Fastborn, so you can combo and play your lands all the time. Um, you've got many combos that are still working in the pack without Fastborn. You can play also. You have to play black, so you have to play Timna and Thresios as commanders, or you have to play Atraxa, which is what I was doing because of the format with Zergo. Um, you can play. You have to play Retreat to Hagra, which is a black enchantment that is going to, uh, you know, make fast bond infinitely. Not only not kill you, but also kill your opponent. So this is a one, two, two cards assembly. Like fast bond is a two card combo or affinity high, high very high affinity with most of the pack. So it's going to be destructive. And uh, explosive also, you can explosive turn one fast bounce. My my record is turn one uh, commander plus uh, plus Argothian enchantress and turn two privileged position a long time ago when I played these cards. Um, you also have access to demonic tutor and you have access to Zerv the enchanter, uh, not as a commander because it's forbidden, but into the pack. So you have to play Zerv the enchanter into the pack. Why? Because you have no creatures, people are going to throw up everything that is just. Uh, throw away everything that is just a, a, a spot removal for creature and then surprise you have Zerv attacking and Zerv getting anything that is minus three minus four um, each and every turn is going to be absolutely destructive. The first one is uh, very hard to come back from and the second trigger from Zerv the Enchanter is going to kill your opponent very 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 fast. So um, just because for example if you got fast bond you can play fast bond and retreat to Hagra, uh, you can play fast bond then you got um, um, you've got um, the, 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 the enchantment that make you either draw or gain more life or whatever you're gonna do is going to generate infinite mana and it's going to be a combo. So uh, yeah, so what are the strength uh, of such packs? Um, as I told you, the pack has uh, good strengths. The first one, it, is, it plays no creature. It plays like, uh, not literally no creature, it plays like 5% creature, which is 5 creatures, I think. Uh, no planeswalkers, um, yeah, no planeswalkers. I mean, uh, if you play the Untapped plan, which is another version of the pack, you can play uh, Garruk, uh, the Wal Garruk World Speaker, and Tethery Temporal Archmage, but this is not recommended, uh, and I think you have to throw these cards out after some time. Uh, I'm just going to try Street because I think it has some affinities with the pack. As usual, the Wizards of the Coast um, um, special commander pack cards that are mythic uh, rares are actually about the rest, and usually they are completely broken. And this one's not completely broken, but it can help uh, do some stuff in the pack. So yeah, as street it is, it's the only uh, planeswalker that you're gonna play in the pack, so people are going to attack you all the time. And also, most of the cards here um, are not only sometimes defending only you, and not the planeswalkers, but sometimes they are not interesting if people can attack your planeswalkers. So, um, also the, the deck plays no artifact, I mean no, which is one, one artifact in the pack. So, any artifact removal is going to be thrown in the dustbin, so people are going to try to focus on your enchantments. Um, no instant, there are just like, there's one instant in the pack, there's only one instant in the packs right now, I think. 
and uh, very few sorceries, which is I think something like five or six sorceries uh, that are just really viable and uh, you cannot dodge them, you have to play them, like you can see one on the table right now. You have to play them because those sorceries are absolutely destructive and you have to play them. So. Um, right now, if I could give a fast, uh, what is the content? Wh wh how, do, how do you play the pack? So, this is kind of easy. You've got piles of cards that I just sorted out right now. Uh, so you've got different types of things that you have to play. First of all things, uh, you have to play some heavy, I mean heavy amount of cards against creatures. But right now we are playing a 20 life format. When I used to play in a 30 life format, I just, this was just the amount of cards against creatures. And there was humility back then. So actually right now you have to play anything you can against creatures. Uh, that is going to be your main source of um, worrying uh, for the first five turns. So. Um, you have to play. Uh, I'm gonna try with um, for, with the ex not expensive cards first. Uh, you're gonna have to play Porphyry Notes, but Porphyry Notes is a bad card. You've got Drop of Honey, but does the same in green. That also costs uh, 100 times more. But you don't you don't care because this is actually already too much. It's actually killing your creatures that are weaker than the other ones all the time. It destroys a Gothian Enchantress all the time, and it's not very easy. But you're gonna try to not play your creatures when you got this. So you have to be very thankful. Uh, um, seal of removal is going to be very cool. I just um, use um, Johnny to Nowhere as a spot removal because it works all the time, it exiles all the time, and it is not a Nora that targets, it's a, a, an enchantment that comes and then targets so you can kill miracles and stuff like that. Uh, and creatures that don't have protection from uh, the color but protection from being targeted, for example, that exists. So this is actually the best of the best, and if I play only one, and I play only one, is this one. Also, you have Authority of the Consoles, which was really good in the zone go era maybe you have to take care about this if you on the draw uh, if you're on the play this is absolutely crazy because even uh, elves and everything else on the other side like from Seskia is going to play untapped and this actually saves you because the weakness of the pack is usually that uh, any haste slash uh, um, spike creature is going to kill you that's going to be very annoying and you cannot do anything because you're playing your whole pack as sorcery speed. You're playing on your turns, on your main phases, and that's only you're gonna do. And you very rarely have an attack phase. So there are actually two phases where you just play the rest of the time. You're just watching your programs, waiting for your turn to happen. So um, you play um, solitary confinement because the, it's one of the ways that you can still uh, handle a pressure. This actually decreases the time where you're gonna have your critical turn and go. Up, uh, in terms of I'm going to win this turn. Uh, this delays the winning turn, but actually this delays also the winning turn of your opponent. So this is a neutral card that you have to play with and against, and at some point you have to realize exactly the good moment where you have to sacrifice it to get your, your stuff back. Um, you have to play all of the things that prevent people from attacking you. The safety sphere is actually the best because in the pack it's basically usually hitting the land and the battlefield for like um, x equals 7 or 8 so your opponents cannot attack unless being 7 or 8 per each creature attacking you, that's nothing. So you usually stop being attacking by everything with this, including the creatures that could kill you. Uh, the second best one is Moat, uh, you have to play Moat in this pack, sorry. Uh, Moat is actually uh, the best one uh, after the other one. Um, then you got Propaganda and you've got Ghostly Prison that just have to make you open and pay two. This one is of course uh, better if you play four colors than if you play three because it's right now four prevent from attacking unless they pay four. So it's less, it's more on the curve and it's more logical. So if you're really afraid of the creatures of the pack, this is one card you should keep. If you don't, this is one of the cards you can remove to get something else in the card spot. This is not a very good card anymore when you're playing only three colors. So uh, Elephant's Grass, same, is going to be very efficient if you play it on the first turns, otherwise it's going to be dead. Uh, then you've got some life gain um, ways, so you've got Retreat to um, Kazandu, which is going to make your creatures get plus one, plus one control you never use, or plus you can get two life gain each and every turn, which is absolutely what you want to be. Especially when you go up and you keep ramping and you keep uh, having your lands bounced and played again, this is going to be cool, especially with fetch lands and stuff like this, you never lose life again. Uh, same goes from uh, this creature, Cursor of Crufix, but uh, Cursor of Crufix is actually also a way to make the deck go faster and accelerate. It's not ramping, it's just accelerating. And um, this is uh, both a combo enabler, this is 
on the other side um, your critical turn uh, where you play all your pack and you're going to win because actually this is one of the ways that you are close to being locked to finishing the turns because you've got, you got not enough mana to go further you have to play this first, calculate your mana, and probably you're going to win one turn sooner if you have the Center Shaman. So the Center Shaman should be helping you. And last but not the least, um, you've got black, uh, you've got the um, the the, uh, the amazing uh, non humility humility that is going to win uh, the overwhelming. Um, I don't even remember the card name of overwhelming obedience. Uh, obedience um, Splendor that you're going to play is going to um, pretty much seal the game against any creature packs. Also, don't forget to remember that this card has more than one line of text. It's not humility. It's a halfway humility. It's only humility on the other side, so yours are still creatures that have lots of capabilities. And uh, it prevents your, your opponents from playing anything that is not a mana or a loyalty ability, which means uh, you can play, they can't they can play uh, equipment, they can play anything that is on the enchantment, any non, uh, like, Bazaar of Baghdad, everything is going to be stopping working. So this is actually a game stopper, this is a game breaking, this is much better than Humility, much, much better, except it costs 8. Also, it's an aura, don't forget to enchant your opponent. So this is the basic of the pack. Uh, the other basic is how do you win? How do you win in the pack? That's a very common question. And the answer is um, you usually win by using very small sets of cards. Um, the cards by themselves in the pack uh, are very easy to understand. They don't win by themselves. Some cards are very powerful, like Moat. Uh, some cards have to be played, like when you've got... They, they, some cards, like Enchanted Evening, do nothing by themselves. Nothing by their own. You, you're not going to change the game state with this. It's not, you just got uh, more enchantments. And uh, actually, having your cards 2x2 two two is going to create an affinity between the cards. 2x2, two 3x3, two, 4x4. Three four four. I actually counted there are up to 300 affinities in the pack. 300 uh, links between cards with different names that you can um, have affinities with, you know. Sometimes small, sometimes very large. So the, the way you win the game is actually really uh, interesting. You've got many ways uh, to win the game. First, you could not die if you play... Um, Energy Field and Wheel of Sun and Moon, because, you know, Energy Field uh, prevents all the damage that is done to you by sources you do not control. Be careful, City of Breath still hits you, etc. You still have your fetch lands, uh, that makes your life lost, this does not do damage to you. Um, this, this means also that uh, every time um, a card is going to put in a graveyard from anywhere, you're going to have to sacrifice it. But if you use Wheel of Sun and Moon, which is an enchantment and an aura, you target yourself, most of the time you target yourself. Sometimes you create a copy uh, when people play with a graveyard like Mereth of Clan Nos, uh, uh, Carador, uh, Doran, everything which is going to play against with the graveyards or reanimate your packs, you're gonna have to target your opponent because you're gonna die faster. This is combo and you're not very good against combo. But most of the time, like 95% of the time, you're gonna target yourself. So as long as you have those two, those two cards in play and they're gonna remain, um, you, can, you prevent all the damage by done to you by uh, sources you do not control. And actually, this, um, this stops like an amazing number of decks in the, in, in the current state of things. Especially even uh, control packs that do not handle enchantments easily are trying to do damage to you like uh, Chandra, like Planeswalkers, like whatever's gonna be, is not going to do damage to you. So this is actually a non-loss condition, it's not a win condition. If you want a win condition right now, you've got an easy one that everyone picks up very fast too. You've got Opalescence and Enchanted Evening. Enchanted Evening is actually one of the key cards of the pack with the Gothian Enchantress, Seraph Sanctum and the Commander maybe, not the Commander, but soon. Um, and trade routes, I'm going to explain. So, uh, those cards are actually winning. So, this means this is combo, this is affinity with uh, anything in the pack, which works with like 50% of the pack at least. And um, when you have this in play, all the enchantments in play, uh, everything is an enchantment, and all the enchantments become creatures with strength and power equal to their casting costs. So, the lands are. I don't have a casting cost, so they got a casting cost of zero, so there are zero zeros. So which means that um, anyone who wants to play a land after this uh, can play a land, but the land, uh, you have to take priority back. After you play your land, you retake priority, so you check state-based effects. And then your land, you realize it's a creature, so first of all, it has, it's got uh, summoning sickness, so it cannot tap right away. And then your land, you cannot even take the mana with it, because you need priority for that. 
um, it's not using the stack, but you need priority. And if you take priority after uh, before having a land, you have to retake priority after uh, putting a land into play using one of your land plays in the uh, mechanics. So this means that your opponents don't have a way to respond to this. When it's hitting the battlefield with those two cards, all the enchantments and everything that costs zero, like Noxes and everything, is going to the graveyard straight away. From this on and future on. So this is actually cool. You say, the um, thing is, you're going to tell me, yeah, but your lands are going to die too. So this is why you play Mirari's Wake, because it's actually both part of the ramp plan and it's also part of the uh, I don't die plan. So your lands cannot be tapped if they enter the battlefield now, but you can have your opponent... Uh, lose their lands and you don't use yours. All your lands are one once. Also this plus this plus this means everything is a creature that can attack and if your opponent is um, killed by um, something like quarantine field that removes all of their permanents, the remaining ones, they literally, as I promised, got no more permanents and they cannot do anything about this. So you play this, this is the killing rush. Now, you don't do this at the beginning of the game, you do this after a few turns and a few ramp spells. This is actually um, a way to kill your opponents really, really uh, recurringly and um, in a very uh, stable way. You don't have to worry about this, it's going to work all the time. So, um, just to make sure that your opponents win, uh, lose, um, sometimes you, have, you prefer to win on your turn, it's going to be very short. So we'll have to play Blind Obedience. Blind Obedience is part of the creature uh, management because it makes all creatures and everything that is basically go um, enter the battlefield tapped and not untapped, so this prevent haste and lots of things. Um, and also, um, Blind Obedience has uh, this special uh, way of doing things, is Extort, which means every time you play a spell, you got Extort on the stack and you have to think if you want to play, uh, in addition to playing your your spell, you have to pay white or black, one white or one black, to make each opponent lose one life and you gain one life. Um, the thing is, um, there is a black symbol on this, but it's on the text. It's not on the card, it's not on the, it's on the explanation text. It's not on the card text. So this doesn't count as the color identity in Commander. So this is actually a white card in terms of color identity. So you don't have to play black to play this. So yeah, Blind Obedience, it is. And then if you want to kill very fast, you've got so many affinities that are this plus the rest I'm going to explain. Um, you've got um, Genesis Wave, which is going to be cast for like after 10, it's usually a win. Uh, if you reach 20, it's more than a win, and 30, it's usually uh, an instant win. You don't have to... Um, sometimes your opponents don't even want to see what you have. If it's the game one, they're going to see what you play. They're interested. But most of the time, it's resolve this, win, and then uh, play the game, the next game, game two, game three, whatever it is. So Genesis Wave cannot be really removed. It looks like it's an impossible card to play. It's really expensive. It's a sorcery. Like I said, no sorceries in the pack. But this one cannot be removed. Like there are other versions of the pack that play Primal Search, for example. And Primal Search has a problem. You have to play very few, if not zero, sorcery instants because you stop Primal Search. And so this is not cool. So yeah, this is the basic win conditions that the deck uses. Um, and I'm going to discuss discuss lots of them later on. Um, also, um, this means that you're gonna have to explain lots of uh, other things with this. Um, next, we've got the ramp slash acceleration pack. It's not ramp, you're not, you're not putting lands into play extra lands. You've got just um, this, but a little bit. You've got exploration, which is a small, very small version of fast bomb, which is cool actually. Land text that is making you search for more basic because you sometimes are going to play uh, on the draw, and when you're on the draw, this is perfect. Um, you've got the classic Lotus Cobra, and this is the only mana acceleration creature I play. I'm not going to play Birds of or Nobody Herak or anything else. Um, the classic Ancient Lens, so Utopia Sprawl, uh, um, Verdant Growth, and uh, the three enchantments uh, are going to help you because. This one does green on anything. This one has done anything you choose on green, uh, on forest, and this one does anything on anything. And actually, right now, we are playing Estrid, uh, which you can see this, uh, and it's somewhere on the pack too, I'm gonna see you. With Estrid, you got new thing, new ways to play this. You're really going to enchant um, with those two ones. You're going to enchant uh, usually a basic land because you don't want to lose this to a wasteland, so you absolutely have to enchant your basic land. But when you are 
feeling like you're going high and you're actually going to draw critical turn, you can enchant Sarah Sanctum and Nyctos with this because with Estrid you're going to have one more chance to untap this and also Estrid does another way to untap what is enchanted so Estrid is also a, a way to accelerate the mana in the pack and last but not the least you've got a very special thing that is complicated to play you've got Habit of Spring and Habit of Spring is a second Mirror's Wake except it works also for your opponents you're going to be surprised because actually the moments where you are going to double your opponent's mana and you feel like it's going to kill you never happen usually you double your opponent's mana they're not ready for it they're like i was just going to play my whole hand my whole hand anyway you know it was going to happen and sometimes you say right i had 10 mana and i got 20 but i've got only eight mana in my hand so land 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 five four and 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 three and two and that's not going to be enough you know people are going to look at their hands and say Good job, I don't care, I got so many mana, I'm just keeping the suspense, I'm not going to play, and they're going to never tap the lens. It's usually a good thing, but you have to play your hard bit of spring at the very last moment. When you're desperate, you can play it on your turn and wait for things to happen. You say, I'm going to die soon, so just die faster. Um, but sometimes it's a very car useful card to play, and you cannot remove these cards from the pack. You have to play all of them, this is actually a mandatory set of cards. Then you've got the anti controlish pack. Uh, it's not really uh, hard against control most of the time because you play stickers and they don't handle stickers. So you've got, uh, first of all things, you've got this against especially black because you don't want to be targeted. So no more emblems from planeswalkers that, that target uh, an opponent. Um, no more uh, discard, no more forces, no more Cosilex Inquisition, no more stuff that are going to damage you, no more burn spells, etc. Uh, this is a card you can remove if you think like it's useless in your local meter, you know. Uh, we've got no more Zergo, no more Red Burn right now, no more... Lots of Queen Marches are Queen Marches that doesn't like this, actually. Uh, also, you've got um, in the Eye of Chaos, which means every uh, instant is counted unless it's open and if it's player... Um, the converted mana cost one more time, so Force of Wheels pitched uh, for like blue card uh, discarded and um, exiled and, and um, one life being paid actually still cost five more unless they're going to be counted. So this is actually kind of cool. And City of Solitude is a is a anything stopper against anyone. So no more end of your turn. I'm doing this no more. This means like you cannot play anything like anything, any ability, any spell, anything on your opponent's turn and vice versa. So. When you do this, usually it's when you're about to finish your combo, you're about to play one of these cards, and you know you don't want to be interrupted, you know you don't want to have it destroyed, you know you don't have to, your combo being half made or not, and this means that your opponent have to have not only one, but two answers to your, your, your ending combo. So if you resolve this, you can just finish by your own, and you can focus on your turn, because you have many triggers like 40 to 50 cards in play, you have many things to think about, I'm going to show you why, um, and you're going to have to think about everything, so this makes you at least not being wondered about anyone else in the game, like, I'm just going to finish my stuff, then if really I cannot finish my turn, you take the next one, I don't care. So yeah, this is actually a good win. Uh, I won against uh, many, many things, including an opponent that could just have like 20 cards in the hand, the whole pack, a full control pack with many counters, uh, 15 mana up, and I was just like, end of turn, um, I'm going to use my seal, break an oblivion ring of yours, and have this came back to the battlefield, my opponent was like, oh, no stifle in hand, and I just won using this. So, actually, City of Solitude is very impressive. It's by far the thing that is going to make control player open their eyes very wide, like, I'm going to counter this really interestingly. So, yeah, this is an anti-control pack, but it's still low against control. Then you've got the... Um, You've got the draw engines, the draw engines are really easy to understand. You've got the Argothian Enchantress, which is one of the key cards of the pack. Again, you cannot have these removes. You have uh, this Edelin of Blossoms, which is, um, both of them, both of them are, you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to. So you have to be careful, and this is uh, Enchantress's presence, and also you have to in this one. Um, the thing is, um, Edelin of Blossoms is actually the more interesting, because it's when an enchantment comes into play. I'm not going to give you all the affinities, but if you got Edelin of Blossoms, 
lands and for example Enchanted Evening, you play your land, you draw, you fetch, you redraw. That's actually really interesting. Um, you've got Sylvan Library, uh, I'm going to shock you too, but even in 20 life points against the girl decks, you can sometimes pay 4 and sometimes pay 8 to win. It's not a problem. I really think it's not a problem sometimes. But at least you got to filter your top decks and you do the same thing with Mirror's Guide. Of course these cards are redundant, having both in place not going to help you very well, but you can have a fetch land sometimes help you. Um, also you have to have um, future sight because uh, that's actually a win condition. Uh, that's actually making you draw when you don't, that's actually helping with uh, um, uh, with um, solitary confinement that I just mentioned in the pack here and also this is going to help when you don't have any more library left you just drew everything and you have like a sorcery you have got like hundreds and hundreds of white mana you're going to have like to play replenish replenish is going to the bottom of your deck thanks to wheel of sun and moon so it's going to be your last card it's also going to be your first card so you reveal it you can play with it um, with um, with um, f f um, future sites and you have to, you can pay the extortion from blind obedience and then you can gain one life make your opponents lose one life then it gets put back to the bottom of the deck and it gets again as the first card that is revealed on future site and you can do this repeatedly and win like that uh, this is expensive you can do this win uh, enlightened tutor is way much more faster to win or to just save a turn because at the end of a turn if your hand is like 25 or 30 cards you're gonna have to discard everything and then with Wheel of Sun and Moon it's going to go back to the bottom of the library and you'll be constituted library which means you're never going to lose as long as you can do this uh, by being by having to draw when you cannot draw you always have to this but you have to watch because the have to enchantments and enchantress uh, have to uh, everything is going to make you count how many times you do this especially another affinity if you play um, if you play uh, Genesis Wave, Genesis Wave is making everything enter the battlefield at once. Which means if you have a Cobra Lotus that I just mentioned here uh, and 10 lands, you get 10 triggers of additional mana. If you got Eidolon of Blossoms and another set of enchantments, you draw for each enchantment. If you reveal with Genesis Wave, uh, Eidolon and uh, Cleansing Meditation and, um, and uh, <laughs> Enchanted Evening and like 10 more permanents that makes 12 draw, draw uh, triggers on Indolent Blossoms. So you can be very careful. Uh, and also when you play Genesis Wave, as a reminder, you cannot have Auras enchant something that is coming at the same time. That's the only exceptions. The cards don't see each other, so you have to choose. And if you got no legal targets, your auras go back to the graveyard upon resolution. But they still trigger um, with this. So you have to be very careful. Um, you, you have to choose legally uh, whatever you're going to play, put back into play, right? So these are um, the classic things I wanted to mention. Uh, then you've got the generic um, cards that you're going to play against most of the time, combos and stuff like that, or control. You've got the rings. Uh, I just pretend those two ones. Really, um, there are like 10 rings. I'm not playing any of them all. Um, it's too complicated. You can have a pack with four rings, but if your opponent is very aggressive, rings are going to be overwhelmed by board presence still, so this is not good. This is one one-off. Not playing the Seal of Primordium, not playing the Array of Silence, this is too much. I only play uh, this uh, enchantment uh, because you have to destroy sometimes with the Seal of Cleansing uh, a random enchantment, a random uh, artifact that is threatening you. And also uh, with Cleansing Meditation you can sometimes destroy anything. This is a Vindicate with um, a Vindicate with Enchanted Enemy, you know. And Replenish because why not? You have to make everything go back to the battlefield. So yeah, this is good. So this was also a part of the pack of... Um, let's say the, the, the combo version. I'm going to um, then talk about the untap plan. The untap plan is actually the best way to win in the game. Uh, this is a different version of the pack. If you play more than this, you can play more than this. Uh, it's not the same pack. So you have to grow, grow, grow until you, re you, you re continuously uh, untap your lens. That is actually cool because you got a Serra Sanctum and sometimes Nyctos and lots of manas with auras or by themselves like the Bounce Lands from Ravnica that generate 2 mana and if you start having lands that generate 2 mana you start winning. 
So, why? Because, um, first of all things, you play Candelabro of Tonus, you have to play this. You, you have to. The text on the old version, because there's only one version uh, in antiquities, you don't... You, you cannot choose. Um, it's not, it's not uh, X, it's uh, tap this and pay X, and untap X lands. So, also, um, this means that you're going to double your mana each and every time you use it. This is going to be the same with uh, Treachery. Um, treachery is going to untap five up to five lands. So actually, treachery you can make it cost less with creatures that reduce the cost, or with doubled mana you can have treachery generate mana and actually make you add more mana to mana pool that it costs. It's generally not going to me uh, pay five, untap and get five more. It's pay five, untap and gain seven, eight, or ten more, if not more with. Uh, with um, Ceres Sanctuary, you know. So, uh, last but not the least, you've got um, Mind of the Matter, which is by far one of the most powerful enchantment in Magic, but it costs 4 blue. Uh, it's really complicated to play, but this is a win condition too. This means anything gets discarded. 95% of the time it's going to be uh, discard a card, untap Ceres Sanctuary. The rest of the time it's going to be untap anything else or Tap your nasty um, attackers, like a miracle was going to happen, anything like Ulamog or any 10-10, anything that gets really too too big, you know, you say, I'm just going to discard, don't attack with me. And the new one is Estrid. Estrid, which means um, you can you can untap everything that is enchanted, so this is a very good untap way, so this is in the untap section, because it's a plus two, you're going to do this all the time, even if you've got no more auras, you know, right? And also a street create for the first time, uh, that wizard sprint, it's aura tokens. Wizard hasn't done everything in magic, like we don't have land tokens right now, but uh, it's going to exist one day, I suppose, and right now we've got aura tokens, and it just put a totem armor auras, which means they're going to be protected. The perfect target with the minus one to put an aura totem is, um, with totemic armor, is a uh, Ceres Sanctum. You're going to uh, enchant your Ceres Sanctum, and then on each of the next following turns, you're going to untap this for free one turn, which is absolutely where you want to be. This is where you want to be. If you see these cards, you're going to go nuts. Of course, um, in the pack, you've got two things that are world cards that I cannot just um, sort in any packs. The two copy enchantments. This one copies anything, including your opponent's enchantments, uh, especially Enchanted Evening. You can get a copy of Chase the Man's Crimson, whatever is going to happen to enter the battlefield with Loyalty Counter, so it's not dying. And Estrid's Invocation uh, is only something uh, copying something on your side, but it's going to retrigger each upkeep you can exile this and have it come back to the battlefield with the same ability. Um, so you can recopy other things, trigger on either Land of Blossoms, trigger on many things. And this actually can enter the battlefield as a copy of, which means it can enter the copy um, the battlefield as a copy of treachery, enchant anything including the shroud creatures like um, Argothian Enchantress has shroud, you can have this enter the battlefield attached to the Enchantress, uh, the Argothian Enchantress, and it's going to be valid, you know, because it can legally enchant this, you just can't legally target it, but it can legally be enchanted. And then um, you're gonna have to, you can keep it because it's not on a targetable creature, and it only enters the battlefield for free, so it, it's a treachery, and when it enters the battlefield you untap five lands, so if you do this twice, actually this is a breath when you're trying to go on your critical turn, when you just play everything. You're going to say, my Sarah Sanctum used to generate five lands, f five minutes, and then I had treachery and more enchantment, then it generates ten, and then if I could just untap this one more time, you do it, you just play this and you untap one more time and Sarah Sanctum is going to make 20 or 30 and then it's unstoppable because you can at least have this back to your hand or killed bottom of your deck, bounce, 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 back to the top and you can play it again and then you can kill this and play it again too, that's going to be crazy. You can also kill uh, Estrid and have it back, you know, this is going to be crazy. So this is the way you make sure that you keep playing, that you keep priority, you keep being on your main phase and you never, you never drop it, right? So this is the untap plan. Um, the untapped plan and the copy enchantments that also have many affinities with the rest of the pack. Like, if you got some uh, cards that I'm going to mention, uh, these are the tutors, but at least you got into the Sterling Grove. If you copy a Sterling Grove, all your board uh, of enchantments has Shroud. And if you have an Enchanted Evening, all your board has Shroud, which is really cool. And if you have also Enchanted Evening, uh, if you have um, Lane of Sanctity, and if you have a pair of these, a couple of these, everything that is concerned by you, which 
which is you, and everything else has thrown, which is actually kind of good. So yeah, now we've got the tutors. The tutors are really easy. So we got enlightened tutor, um, which is cool. Remember, this is supposed to be an ancient trace draw trigger on the stack. You play this in response, so you can just may have, have everything you want as an enchantment in your in your hand. But also, this gets an artifact. You can't get the candelabra of Tunus with it. You have to think about this. Sometimes you want to have your candelabra of Tunus on the top deck because candelabra costs one. And as long as you have two or three lands that make two mana, candelabra is going to be plus six mana all the time. So we have to think about this. So remember, this is a, a fetch of um, artifacts too. This one, um, I'll keep it in French because a very good friend of mine gave this to me. This is one that is not going to be a Russian for you. Um, and uh, actually, Idyllic Tutor is uh, slightly better than Enlightened Tutor because when you can play this, you can usually play the enchantment you're going to get. And most of the time, it's going to be uh, when you don't know what to do, it's going to be a uh, Season Library. When you have part of the combo, it's going to be the other part of the combo. And when you have to, you know, keep growing, you don't know, you are too many lands in hand, it's going to be Trade Roads all the time. So then you've got this because it's an enchantment, it's a tutor, and it's a um, spell of prevention, you know, because people have to play this and to handle this first but if you want to destroy this as a response you pay one you sacrifice it you get a new target and you put it on the top so this is actually cool and if you got wheel of sun and moon you can actually crack this have it back sh uh, then, then then try to find it and you find it again put, to put it on top so it's actually quite cool um this is uh the green suns in it that you have to play it has four legal targets in the back which are green uh, including maybe the fifth one if you had to wish or follow your commander into your deck don't do this. Um, yeah, Green Sun Zenith is actually uh, very good. You get the uh, Argothian Enchantress most of the time. Uh, then you get the Love Blossoms, like uh, it's like 45 45, and 10% of the time you're gonna get uh, the Centaur, um, that's going to make your enchantment cost less. Or you're going to fetch very rarely the Lotus Cobra for some reasons because you want to have fast mana and you say, hmm, I got many mana, but I need colored mana of any color. Like you green only, you got forest, 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 and you say, ah, come on, Lotus Cobra, and then you play a, a fetch or you play uh, another forest and you can get some white or blue mana and keep going. Uh, and of course, Wargate. Wargate has um, one purpose. It's played for zero and it's going to get Serious Sanctum all the time. All the time. Like, 90% of the time. The rest of the time, you're going to think about two things. If you have much mana and you don't know what to do, this is a top deck, you don't have anything else, you have like 10 mana, your next thing, your next choice is going to be uh, Future Sight. You're going to get Future Sight. Usually, it's going to be a defensive spell if you don't have Future Sight. It's going to be Sylvan Library to draw more or, um, or um, one of these two cards if you got the other one in hand or on the battlefield, you're going to fetch this. Um, also remember this or Genesis Wave, if you search for Wheel of Sun and Moon and you enchant yourself, upon resolution this does go on the graveyard so it goes under your deck so you don't lose the cards. You have to think about this, um, Genesis Wave and Wargate don't go straight away to the to the graveyard when you resolve them, so be careful. And also, um, to finish the pack here, we got um, some wall cards, um, like uh, cards that you can play and you can remove because they are not mandatory. You've got the Rectum, uh, the Rector Academy, uh, Academy Rector, you know, it's um, it's very fragile, so it's you, it, it gets killed by anything, but yay, it gets killed by everything. Doesn't work with Wheel of Sun and Moon, be careful, it triggers from the graveyard and has to be in the graveyard upon resolution, that's actually different. This is not uh, when it dies, this is when it dies, if it is still in the graveyard, do something. It's usually going to get the hardest enchantments to cast, which are this one, Future uh, Sight, um, Mind of the Matter, and most of the time, Mirror is Wake and Enchanted Evening, right? This just doesn't have any other targets, usually. This is what uh, Academy Rector is about. Um, you've got balance because it's stupid. You don't play creatures. You got your hand that's going to be down on the table when you are losing and up to your hand when you are winning and you don't need to play balance. And the only danger with balance is this pack uses more land plays. So you're going to have more lands than your opponents most of the time. And if you use like... Um, uh, like a uh, land tax. Land tax is not a friend of balance because you're going to have many cards in hand, you're going to have to put everything in the dustbin to save yourself. So balance is actually very good with the pack because you don't play creatures. Uh, next you've got search for a scanter. Uh, search for a scanter is 
brilliant in the pack. One of the best additions over last years. It's a staple in standard, it's a staple in modern right now as I'm talking, making this video not for long, but it's absolutely devastating. Uh, you have to be careful about putting only lands in the graveyard usually because you don't have many ways to recover your lands, your enchantments, and usually they are critical. So you cannot have these enchantments in the dustbins. Usually you're going to lose if you do this. So you have to be very careful because you have to know your alternate win conditions. But most of the time like um, ram spells or stuff like this or the other ones can be put in the graveyard. Like if Rector is not helping you, why not put in the graveyard? You don't care. Usually with the fetch lands and all the stuff you play, it's going to be quite efficient in the mid game. But this is not like in control packs. This is going to be not good in the beginning of the game. So have to be careful and also uh, when it's turned back it becomes a, a, um, a scan have a sunken rune and it's actually the best thing you could wish for because it triggers you can enchant it you can untap it with a street you can untap it with a candelabra of turners you can just fetch twice a turn uh, you look at four cards and you get a non creature non land pack and guess what it's everything everything in the park is non creature non land so this is absolutely going nuts like a scanter is perfect for the pack uh, the first fake card, one of the key cards, absolutely amazing card, brilliant card in the pack, with Argothian Enchantress, Wargate, um, with uh, Minari's Wake, Enchanted Evening, and, um, and the Ceres Sanctum, you've got Trade Roots. Uh, the pack used to be not bad, but when I found out about Trade Roots, like everyone I was just like, oh my god, this is devastating. And yes, it is. This is actually preventing you from being a land flood. Which means you play 40 lands, I play 40 lands, but you don't care. This is actually good. This triggers uh, new land plays, this triggers with Cobra Lotus Cobra. This allows you to have a Serra Sanctum that already makes 20 white mana. Use white, uh, bounce it back to your hand. You didn't play a land, you replay the Serra Sanctum. You've got 20 more lands later on. This is absolutely bonkers. This enchantment is actually saving you. This prevents all the non basic land from being saved from wasteland. This means you can bounce everything to your hand until you've got no more lands and then play balance. This does everything in the pack. It's absolutely crazy. This is one of the key cards that doesn't have any other effects but is like in the um, pack. So you're going to have to fetch it all the time. This is a very good target for Wargate. Uh, this is actually wonderful. This is just fucking crazy, you know. Um, you have to be taken about this. Then there's one last slot, the 100 slot, um, that you can change easily. Most of the people will play more uh, spot removal and crit removal. I just play um, counterbalance because, as I said, I like playing non commander stuff into commander. Counterbalance is not good, counterbalance is not bad either. It's just making your opponent nuts because your opponent is going to have to play differently, especially if you keep watching the top of your deck with, you know, Corsair of Crufix or Fiducite, then your opponent sees what he can play and not play, and you have fetch lands that are not triggered in play. This is going to be crazy. You cannot stack, you cannot, you're not playing um, Sensei's Divining Top, of course, because it's forbidden, it would be useless in the pack, but you can play this. You can easily remove a, a counterbalance and make anything else that you want to play. This is by far the most useless card in the pack. I just think it's actually kind of good. Right? And in the lands, it's actually easy to understand what we play uh, as lands in the pack too. This is actually really, uh, really, really fucking easy. You've got, um, first of all, you've got the basics, like the, the fundamentals. You've got the three dual lands that you have to play. You have to play those three dual lands, you cannot have, there's nothing else to say about this. Uh, one more thing, you're going to probably fetch for Savannah most of the time. Most of the time in Savannah, the deck is by far green-white. The number of turn 1 in green and white are amazing. There's only seal of removal in blue and it's not enough to be fetching anything else. So then you've got the equivalent in Ravnica lands, the dual lands. Uh, then you've got um, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 fetch lands. You see, when you got the 9 fetch lands, the only one you don't play, of course, is the Bloodstained Mire. Uh, it's not dangerous to play the extreme ones, like the ones that only get you blue, 
like scrolling tone, mm, like uh, polluted delta, and the ones that are only getting white, like um, marsh flats, it's actually still good even if you don't have that many targets. So this is the basic of playing a dual commander pack and you cannot have less than this. Then you've got um, some special triggers. Um, you've got, first of all, you've got the two untapped lands from the Magic 2010 cycle. Uh, I'm not playing Glacial Fortress, it's not good enough. You want the green ones only. Once again, green is your main color. You've got the three filter lands uh, from Lowing and um, Morning in Eventide. You cannot have anything else than these ones because when you're gonna tap your Serra's Sanctum, it's going to make a bunch of white. You have to convert white into green or blue. You have to do something with this. And also the blue helps you play something like um, those two enchantments that are actually more than just too much blue. So yeah, you have to play these ones too. And they are not dangerous. They are sometimes deceiving, but you're not really going to lose your mind to this. Serious Sanctum, uh, I'm not going to even describe this. This is the absolute ultimate bullshit. This is the white Tolarian Academy, the white Gaia Scale Cradle, and it works all the time. This is what you need the most. When you got this in play, you cannot lose. Be careful, sometimes you're not sure about how many mana it's going to make, so you just keep it in your hand. It's not going to be discarded in your hand. No one targets about Mind Twist, maybe, but no one really targets lands in your hand. But you're going to play this at the very last moment so you don't get it wasteland for nothing, right? This in the graveyard means you're gonna have real lots of trouble winning. Then you've got uh, Nyctos. Nyctos um, does exactly the same thing, except it's going to tap for green most of the time and sometimes blue, like all of, very often, like two thirds of the time, green and one third blue. Um, Nyctos will never make even half the mana that Serra Sanctum is doing, be careful. This makes up to 30 mana, this never makes more than 15 at first, and usually 20 at the very end of the game, so you have to be very careful, but Nictus, just a reminder, if you got uh, three colors in your devotion, it's not doing more mana than it costs, but it's converting mana, uh, like you got white, white, you make one white, you count green, and you got green, 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 so this actually changes the color of mana, this is used as a filter land, and after more than three, then you get some additional mana, this is really cool. Um, then you got something that you have to play because it makes all the colors. So you have City of Brass and Command Tower. Nothing to say about this. This is just making all the free colors. Be careful. City of Brass doesn't deal damage to you with um, solitary confinement, but City of Brass deals damage to you with um, with energy field. Uh, then you've got the free bounce lands. You need lands that makes more than three mana. This reduces the number of lands, so it's cool with balance. This actually retriggers all the lands. This is nuts. These lands are absolutely nuts. One bad thing though, your opponent is going to be very happy if they see a wasteland and you're going to think the pack is going to be two turns back in time. So this happens, uh, this is a bad thing, but this is not something you cannot overwhelm, you know. So you have to you have to be careful. Oboro. Oboro Palace of the Clouds in Palace in the Clouds is actually something amazing uh, by itself. If you play fast bond, it's another way to win with fast bond. We don't play fast bond, but it's forbidden, you know. But this plus fast bond is actually a very powerful trigger. It's a very easy way to win. Oboro makes blue mana when you don't have blue. Uh, like you can just pay green, tap for blue, put it back in the battlefield, and get one more blue. So you can play two blue instead of white, instead of white green, you know. Uh, and Oboro can be saved by itself from Iceland, from Runation, from anything else. And also Oboro has a way to re-trigger when you don't have land in your hand and you don't draw them, which is happening sometimes. So Oboro is actually very, very fine to play in the pack. Then you've got the classic um, tutor for um, for um, Serious Sanctum, which costs zero, you know, to lie your wests. Uh, 98% of the time is going to be for uh, Serra Sanctum, 2% of the time is going to be for Nyctos, and 0, zero something phew, dust is going to be fetching for uh, another land, a, um, a bounce land. Last but not the least, uh, this is good against control. I play uh, Chemist's Refuge in 3 colors, I don't play this in 4 colors. You cannot have any land that doesn't make colored mana. This does not, and it's really on the edge. This can be easily removed, and you can add the basic land, you know. 
And in terms of basic land, uh, just for for the moment, I won with Alchemist's Refuse one time. My opponent was playing Mono Blue with Temple Bell, making everyone draw. Then with uh, his own um, Mind of the Matter, discarding the card to make everyone draw again, reshuffling with Algrazis. So I was going to lose on the draw. And when he was about to reshuffle for the last time, I say, wait, I got answers. I'm going to tap Alchemist's Refuge. And I actually won on my opponent's turn on the stack when there were like 10 things on the stack by casting the enchantments and actually destroying everything which is actually cool you know and then in terms of basic you complete that makes 40, 30 lands so to go up to 40 you have to play 5 forests 2 islands and 3 planes uh, that's, this is actually something you can arguably change but you've got really much more need of a forest and planes come as a second so you can just remove one forest and play 4-4 four, four. that's something you can arguably change especially if you change the cards I mentioned in the pack so um, right now I was going to speak about other things um, this is the card so um, what else to say you've got some variations on the pack so um, actually I've seen some people play creature-based pack, which is something I don't do, but it's actually very cool. You play um, with um, different creatures, you play with birds, noble heroes, Lano Elves, mystic elves, uh, etc. You play cryptolith rites, uh, you play combos with squirrel nest and elf crafts. You play creature tutors, you play a like drummer's call, a worldly tutor, etc. You play auras like Rancor, Armadillo Cloak, and especially this you don't think about uh, Ancestral Mask. Ancestral Mask plus Enchanted Evening is uh, plus 200 plus 200. This goes beyond anything. This is completely overkill. So if you got an Armadillo Cloak or a Rancor, this is going to be a two card win on any card. You also got a Yavimaya Enchantress, which is usually becoming as beautiful as this one. Uh, as your commander, uh, you've got Daybreak Coronet, which is going to be played. You've got... Um, You've got um, things that can be played with those creatures like uh, Instill Energy is absolutely amazing if you play creatures. You've got uh, Glare of Subdual in the position if you want to play uh, control with creatures. You can play Core Spirit Dancer and Flickering Ward. Flickering Ward is going to be amazing. It is by far the best aura in the pack. One, one white color, the protection from the color, and it doesn't remove the Flickering Ward. One white back to your hand. This is actually um, really crazy, you know. So, uh, yeah. Then there are some packs who play around um, combos, you know, you can play Survival of Fittest, Aluren, you can play uh, with Red, also you have to play Red, Kiki Jiki, Beringer, Restoration Angel, you have to play, uh, this is going to be an, an limited number of creatures on the board, you can play uh, Evolutionary Leap, you can play Prismatic Omen, and Valakut or Scape Shift. This is actually working well with enchantments. You can play uh, some one-shot creature combos with Defense of the Heart. Uh, off of Druids is banned, so if it's unbanned right now, you can play Off of Druids with you know this pack with no creature and only huge creatures. Uh, and of course the um, all card, the Forbidden All card and stuff like that. Uh, Pattern of Rebirth is also a card that you could be interested in if you want to play around creatures. Uh, some packs play good stuff, like just good stuff. They play half life enchantments and half more other things like counter spell. Time Twister is still in the format, it's good. You can play Pernicious Deal, which is actually looking like it kills you, but sometimes it's good because you recur enchantments, it's actually good in the pack. Um, they play around combos with Cleansing Meditation, which is a sorcery which has threshold and works with Enchanted Evening. I played this for a long time, this is a brainless way to win, but it's not going to be powerful enough. So, uh, of course, if you, play, um, if you play this, you also want to play Flagstones of True Care to just get an additional plane and then have everything back to the battlefield. This is an instant kill, you want uh, to play... Uh, Sun Titan to get everything back, Eternal Witness, Eternal Witness plus Sun Titan. This is just good stuff. You can play this too, it's actually interesting. And it's cause you are more than used to, and you can also attack more with this kind of good stuff pack. Um, you've got an enchantment destruction pack also, which is based on Femerith Enchantress. Maybe you know this is one of the enchantress I'm not playing. Or Hatching Plans, if you remember. Hatching Plans, all the enchantments that destroy things by sacrificing, like uh, Soul Snare, you're sacrificing, like. Um, uh, like everything I mentioned before, like uh, Seal of Primordium, etc. And you've got the full untapped pack, which is something I played before, um, which is how to win 
by never giving back the turn without playing fast bond. So you play Teferi, Temporal Archmage, uh, Magus of the Candelabra in addition to the Candelabra. You play Garrick, Wall Speaker. Uh, you play um, you play many things. Uh, you play um, you play uh, uh, reset. Reset. You have to play reset to things like that, and this is actually um, interesting. So right now, uh, I'm going to mention uh, I'm going to mention lots of things that I haven't played, and I played. I tried them. I swear I tried them, and mention uh, notable cuts that you have to try because I'm not certain that those cuts are actually good things to be on the sideboard. And depending on your meta game and what is going to be played and what you expect, they are actually good. I just got 100 cards to mention, so I hope you are really uh, sit right now. If you want to drink something, you have to. So I stopped playing um, all the lands that do uncolored uh, stuff. Like Mesa Fifth does not do anything. Wasteland is useless in the pack. Cavern of Souls doesn't do anything in the pack. You have to really stop playing Commanders without Cavern of Souls. It's not a not to include pack. Nor does uh, Command Tower be. Command Tower shines in this pack. Uh, Cavern of Souls doesn't do anything. You don't care about anything getting countered for no reason, especially not your Commanders, right? So don't play Cavern of Souls. Glacial, Gla Glacial Chasm is actually a very good thing, but uh, it's too high to upkeep, it's too high to maintain, and uh, you don't have many ways to gain life, so you're going to have to stop playing this. Uh, I don't play Horizon Canopy, right? Nor do I play Mana Confluence, because those cards are actually too hard to maintain, and if you got them on turn 1, you are actually destroying yourself. Any aggressive pack is going to have 5 more points in your face just by you playing those lands, so I stop playing other lands that damage you. For the same reason I stopped playing Pain Lands. Um, too bad. The Future Sight once uh, and the Ice Age once. And any other dual land, like anyone. Future Sights uh, are very good, like uh, Maze of the Halo and, uh, and uh, those cards are really interesting, but they should be played. Flagstones of Stroker, I just cut it out because it's only white, it's good, but not that good. Um, if you have to expect a blue meta game, you have to play, you have to play Molten is Presence and Carpet of Flowers, but I just stopped playing this because there's no more blue in the format right now. Uh, Myth Realized is some card that you can easily set in. Uh, I like the card, really, it's really good. Uh, Stony Silence is not really efficient in the meta game, it's just good against the Kerry Silas. Uh, Luminarch's Ascension, uh, Island Sanctuary, if you don't want to get attacked, Seal of Primordium, just like I said, I just remove this. Uh, all the sagas, all the sagas from um, uh, from uh, Dominaria are actually bad. Uh, Rhystic Study is a good card in multiplayer, it's not good in dual. Uh, Compulsion is very good. Compulsion is a card I recently stopped playing because I was upset with it. Uh, Mystic Remora is something you don't want to play against, but you have to test this. You have to test uh, Mystic Remora is actually good. I'm not playing all the other Enchantresses. Verdurin Enchantress, Mesa Enchantress, the Satyr from um, M90 that just got out, uh, the Core Spirit Dancer with Flickering Water was amazingly good, you know. I stopped playing this. Um, I stopped playing the Thermarest Enchantress because those are not really handling the meta game. They are too expensive, they get shot by anything, they just get lightning bolted for no reason, you don't want this. Uh, I don't play Spreading Seas either, I'm not afraid of the opponent's lands, there are no more Gaius Cradle in the battlefield, no more Tolerian Academy, you know. I don't play Drop of Honey, like I said, uh, one is already too much, I'm not really impressed by um, Nodules of Porphyry, and actually Drop should be better because it's usually going to be easier to cast, so if you can afford the price, Drop of Honey is better, slightly, very slightly, but it's one zero 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 dot one optimization, but you can do this, or play both, if you want to. Um, I don't play Ground Seal and Rest in Peace. Ground Seal because the meta game is not playing with the graveyard. You are only really worried about Gitrog Monster, and Gitrog Monster doesn't really get stopped by Ground Seal. You really need Rest in Peace, and Rest in Peace is killing you. If anything goes to your graveyard, you lose your combo pieces. Enduring Ideal uh, uh, is not it's not interesting at all. Just don't play this. The card is amazing, but it's really too. Uh, it's dual commander. You know, it's much more aggressive than you think. And Enduring all the is just. Meaning that you cannot do anything for the rest of the game and you're going to lose, even if you combo out really fast. Uh, suppression Field, one of the most powerful enchantments ever printed, is actually surprisingly killing you too because you are playing Dual Commander, so no Suppression Fields. Suppression Fields make like uh, no one is going to play. 
Uh, all planeswalkers, just forget the planeswalkers. The only one that is notable uh, is Estrid and maybe Garrick Wall Speaker. Uh, Aura Shards, don't play Aura Shards, it's not good, it's fun in multiplayer, but no. Uh, the 15 gods from Terros, please don't, don't, don't even try them. Um, the only one that is um, honorable mention is uh, Thassa, the god of the sea, because it's indestructible, cry, and it's actually attacking, so it's, it's a kill condition. So Thassa is um, good. Good. I would just say good. The other ones are not good. Uh, Trios, uh, anything else like Aruas, um, anything else is just going to be bad. Um, squirrel nests, maybe if you got the, the plan with squirrel nest and Earthcraft and uh, Perforos, maybe it's going to be something, but it's really too hard to assemble, so the gods are not good. Uh, the functional Oblivion Rings, like I said, just play those two ones. Um, I used to play more and more and six or seven rings and then I said I don't need any of this shit so I just removed all of them and I started winning again. So Oblivion Rings is not good, you don't care. Rights of Flourishing, very good card, slightly off the edge, you can play this, I recommend that you try uh, Rights of Flourishing, it's good. Privileged Position, very powerful cards, bad friend, it's a bad, good idea, you don't want Privileged Position. Uh, the extreme uh, land pack like Crop Rotation and um, Crop Rotation and Silver Scraying, uh, I'm not playing them, or, or Expedition Map, I think you would work. Those cards are too good stuff, not good for the pack, they are lost most of the time, especially if you got your target and no enchantments, you're just going to fetch for something else that you're not going to have in play. Uh, stasis, one of the most brilliant enchantments in life, you don't have a pack that revolves around Stasis. Uh, s is good with Stasis, but that's just being the only thing that is going to work with, you know, Stasis. So, Dream Horse, uh, again, Dream Horse is made for 4 copies, 60 cards, not for single turn, you don't work with this. Doubling Season is just fun in multiplayer, fun in Planeswalkers pack, it's not fun in Enchantment pack. Burgeoning, I stopped playing Burgeoning. Burgeoning is really good if you play multiplayer. Uh, in 1v1 it's not working at all. Uh, Karmic Justice, this is really cool. You have to you have to try Kami Justice because if you play against decks like Queen Marches or, or Green White with Reclamation Sage and stuff like that, people are never going to touch your fucking ball because you say if you do this, you're losing your dual land, you're losing this, you're losing your planeswalker, I just choose and you got nothing else. So usually um Kami Justice means people are going to kill Kami Justice first. Uh, Monastery Siege, uh, not impressed by the card, as foretold, used to be a great idea, you test and then you say, hmm, no, it's not on the tempo, it's never on the tempo, it's always too late. Uh, Planar Cleansing, uh, against if you're afraid of creatures, it's um, too many enchantments that just wait for four creatures to be vent and then you kill everything. Uh, Dream Tides, Dream Tides is not uh, good, as I guess said. Uh, Invoke Prejudice, wonderful, amazing, except it's four blue. So f if you play four colors, just forget Invoke Prejudice. If you play three colors, you can play Invoke Prejudice, except that all your creatures, the many creatures you're gonna play, especially your commander, are actually the most aggressive colors, except it's not red, but only red and then you cannot play anything, so Invoke Prejudice is good against red and black and uh, the rest of the time is not good, so it, it, it looks like good but it's not. Uh, then you've got the Oath, the Oath of Jace and Nissa. Uh, Jace, not really good. The Oath of Nissa is actually right, quite if impressive, uh, but not that impressive, especially since you got no Planeswalkers and you're not going to reveal anything on Oath of Nissa. Starfield of Nyx, uh, yeah, sorry bro, I don't like the card, I've played it many many times, it's too expensive, it's just one mana, white mana, which is cool, but you don't want this. Uh, Frantic Search, Frantic Search is very interesting in the pack, and when you want to play the untapped pack, you have to play Frantic Search. I don't play the full untapped pack, so I don't play Frantic Search, but it's actually one card you should consider. Uh, Sandworm Convergence is a fake kill that you don't want in your pack. Telepathy looks like, yeah, I'm going to know what I do. And then you play tele Telepathy, you have this, you look at your opponent's hand and you say, right, uh, I'm still going to lose. So, not good. Good trigger, not good card. Nevermore, if you're really afraid of the combo packs, you play Nevermore. Copy artifacts, useless. Uh, multi presents, I already mentioned it. Uh, standstill. Standstill is a thing you have to play complete pack around, like in Legacy, and it's not going to be useful in commander you're gonna lose with standstill. Uh, time spiral uh, is a card that you have to consider except that right now the deck has too many very expensive cards so no time spiral sorry bro it's already too expensive. Adoration is cool but you have to play the creature based pack I mentioned above. Uh, Reverence for the same thing is cool especially if you play humility but you can because it's banned. Um, aura Spots Removal, uh, I don't play Aura Spots Removal. When they are Auras, they are actually really weak. 
uh, Dark Steel Mutation, Linify, uh, Pacifism, um, uh, Silhouette, Banishing Light, Songs of the Dryad, Imprisoned by the Moon, and everything else uh, is just going to be a waste. You're going to waste your time on this. Uh, I like Soul Snare. Soul Snare is good because it's not an aura. It's an enchantment that just gets the battlefield and actually triggers later on. Soul Snare handles creatures that the other enchantment cannot handle. So this is cool. Soul Snare is good. Uh, all the hidden something, um, I stopped playing them. Hidden uh, Gibbons is actually cool. Hidden Spider is not really cool. Lots of these cards are actually cool. They cost one, but I don't like the hidden cycle. Uh, the Opal Titan is not good, even if you do try. Uh, the Tethered Griffin is just a creature. Um, then you've got the Parallax something. Parallax side is good. You've got many combos. You can just play, trigger, destroy it, have it back. You can exile your own lands and have your own lands back into the same turn, like your Serra Sanctum is going to be trigger. Um, then you have um, the combo with Opalescence if you play Parallax Wave. And it's actually fun with the track side if you play the Parallax Wave, Dexus, and uh, Tide. But I don't really uh, like. So, just to finish uh, a few things, what are your matchups? Uh, what are your matchups? Um, you've got 50% against everything. Uh, you are bad against Pike Haste, which is um, Saskia, for example, which is going to destroy you whatever you do. Uh, it's bad against mid range because it's going to be 50 50, and people play random spells they shouldn't be playing, and those spells very often destroy what you want to do. Uh, the colors that hit you are green and white because they destroy enchantment and the colors, the other colors don't do. Uh, the hate cards against you are probably like balance uh, when it's played against you. Uh, cataclysm is really a cataclysm against you. Austere comments, I swear people still play sometimes austere comments. Uh, Gedoctig is gonna wreck you away. Uh, Talia, Guardian of Febon, uh, another thing that just prevents you from playing your cards is just going to be bad. This is good against red and black, this is good against planeswalkers, this is good against uh, big down creatures that are just plain attacking creatures, no ability like Brimas, King of Forest Coast, or whatever it is going to be. It's good against these kind of people. It's bad against fast combo, it's bad against fast recursion that goes faster than this one. Like Gitrog Monster is actually kind of a hard matchup. Um, what are the cards you would like to uh, want in the pack, if they were legal? First of all, like I said, Fastbound makes this pack go from tier whatever to tier close to 1. This is actually really good if you got Fastbound, the pack is absolutely curvable and unstoppable. Uh, humility is also what you want to do. I've played this pack for 3 or 4 years with Humility in the meta. It's actually mind-blowing, you don't care about anything else. So if one card has to come back right now for you, it's Humility. Uh, Emrakil the Onsvorn could be played in the pack. Also, you could make a special setup, I tried this, with Back to Basics. Back to Basics with only most basic lands and a few fetch lands, you don't care about the fetch lands. It's actually kind of cool, and also if you play the untapped plan plus Back to Basics, you don't really care about your non-basic lands being tapped and never untapping. Uh, Mana Drain is devastated in the pack. If you go in the mid-game, Mana Drain plus X mana on the rest is absolutely broken. Uh, the Derevi, uh, the the the, Derevi, the Empyrean Tactician is better than this commander, but it's banned. Uh, the Tutors, uh, the Vampiric Tutor especially, and the Seal if you can have this, but it's not really interesting as well. And of course the Mox Diamond, uh, not the other Moxes. Uh, the P9 Moxes of course would be amazing in this pack, but Mox Diamond is actually cool um, and playable and reasonable. Uh, Chrome Mox is not good in the pack, but uh, the other ones are good. And just to um, finish with, uh, with a, a small note of the future, what, what could you be expecting in the future if you have this pack and you play this? Uh, you should spot like new enchantment draw engines, like new enchantresses. You should definitely look out for that. Like the satire right now is amazing and it's been an addition that is great to the pack. Uh, Edelon of Blossoms, what a great addition to the pack. I I'm thinking about playing one more Enchantress in the pack and it's going to probably be satire of the, the satire from uh, M19. Uh, you want to look at curved enchantments, uh, especially the ones that do more things than they need to be for less, which is cool. Uh, you want to see uh, the reprints. Um, which is the bad thing here, if you are playing Moat, if you are playing Replenish, if you are playing um, uh, things like uh, Drop of Honey, if you are playing Serra Sanctum, those cards are on the Wizards of the Coast reserve list, so you're never going to see them again right now. 
and the Durands are as well. So uh, the pack has a very high price and it's going to be... Uh, you don't have to make full Asian like I do because I have it for years. It's full Korean, Russian and Japanese and whatever it is foil. Uh, you don't have to do this, but if you don't, even if you don't, it's going to be very expensive. So, yeah, there are a few cards. Candelabra of Tonus as well uh, is on the list. A anything like that is going to be um, amazingly hard to find and to pay. So you're gonna have to have people lend cards to you. So this is actually the the drawback of the pack. It's kind of expensive, and I I do apologize for that because sometimes you have to. If you play Time Twister, it's gonna be even more expensive. But you have to try because it's actually a very fun pack to play. And um, I do really like the packs where you actually finish the game by your own. You know, I play with these four major archetypes in Magic, like creatures, artifacts, and enchantments, which is I play Animar, um, Arkham Dexon, and um, Tuvas have a sunlit which those packs are truly amazing and i really like what they are and how they get played this is actually cool so yeah um try it enjoy i may i may have forgotten lots of things but uh there are plenty of things to say about this pack so uh enjoy i'll see you up ahead and i hope you like the pack and if you got questions and stuff like this just feel free to pm me uh see you and thank you very much